Hello again science students, Mr. Machowski here to review with you some of your science notes. Uh, today we're talking about the problems or ailments of the digestive system and what could be nicer to talk about on a beautiful spring day than digestive problems. Um, the good news for you in terms of studying is you're familiar with an awful lot of these. Almost everybody gets digestive. I'd say everybody gets digestive problems now and again. If you're lucky, you won't have cardiovascular problems. Uh, you won't have respiratory problems, although, of course, with the uh, health crisis that's going on, everybody's hearing about respiratory problems. Um, but uh, everybody gets digestive problems, and the reason is it's so much easier for germs to get into you. I mean, this is the germs get into you through eating and drinking and uh, touching your fingers to things and then touching your mouth. So digestive ailments are so much easier to catch. And so we're all very familiar with them. So I'm going to breeze through your notes about uh, problems affecting the digestive system. And so I just, this is obviously not all of them, but I picked the ones that are so common you will hear them in TV commercials. You may know about them from relatives or from yourself. Heartburn, uh, technically called acid reflux. So uh, your stomach has this valve at the top of the stomach, right at the bottom your esophagus goes down and then your stomach has a valve there that closes so that after you've swallowed food it can't easily come back up. If you lean forward to, to tie a shoelace all your breakfast doesn't just pour out of you like milk out of a pitcher because this valve is closed. For some people that valve weakens and so when they've eaten food and their stomach mixes that food with stomach acid the valve doesn't close all the way and so if they're really full or if they've eaten and now they're lying down, like they're taking a nap or going to bed, acid can kind of leak up back up the esophagus. Now, your stomach is coated with stuff to protect itself from your own stomach acid, all right? Um, but your esophagus is not. It doesn't have that protection. That's why if you ever have to vomit, um, which most of us have had to do at one time or another, you, you, it's an unpleasant, bitter, acidy taste. And it has a burning sensation in your throat and your sinuses and all that, depending on how bad it was, you know. You, you feel that burn. Well, um, that's stomach acid, and, and it can damage your throat. Now, it doesn't really damage your throat on one pass, um, but if that valve is loose and stomach acid is constantly working its way back up, then um, that can burn the esophagus. And so you see the... Um, the symptoms of burning feeling, nausea, feeling sick to your stomach. Um, if it's constant, if a person has this all the time, you can get internal bleeding from the esophagus bleeding, um, and it can interfere with your ability to eat food. So if you have relatives that are constantly taking Tums and Rolaids every time they eat something, that's not good. They should see a doctor about that. You know, most people um, can get heartburn or something, uh, it's rare for kids, all right, but adults can get it once or twice a year or something if they eat something in particular. They take a Tums or a Rolaids and that d dissolves the acid. But you shouldn't be doing that every meal or several times a week. That That's going to make your stomach make more acid. Your stomach can tell when you've dissolved all the acid with the Tums and it says, ooh, I better make more. So, um, that's something to be aware of. Bulimia, people who make themselves throw up on purpose as a, uh, a misdirected sense of this will help me lose weight. Bulimia has the same effect. It's putting stomach acid through that esophagus all the time. So you, you don't want that. You can read about all the different possible causes and all that. Nausea is just the technical, the more literate term for feeling sick to your stomach. Um, all kinds of, this is an interesting one because people can feel sick to their stomach without actually having any illness. There, you know, there are not too many diseases and ailments that are purely um, in the mind, um, but nausea can be in the mind. Um, you can feel sick to your stomach because you swallowed something with germs in it and then your body wants to get rid of the germs, get rid of them real fast. You could also feel sick to your stomach because you saw or heard or smelled something that grossed you out. And that's interesting, right? Because seeing things can't really make you physically ill in an important way. Or hearing a gross story or listening to some kid crack their knuckles when you don't like that. I mean, these things can't actually make you ill, but you can still feel sick to your stomach. Motion sickness, all that stuff. So, you know, check that out. Ulcers. Okay, you may have relatives that say, ah, oh, you're giving me ulcers. Oh, don't, don't talk to Uncle Mikey about, you know, politics. It works on his ulcers. Ulcers are when your stomach or your small intestine is getting damaged by stomach acid. Now, your stomach normally has coatings that protect it from its own acid. 
but sometimes um, uh, bacteria, certain bacteria can weaken that coating in a certain spot. And, and, and ulcers are something that kids your age don't usually get, okay? But by the time you're in your 20s and 30s, if you're a high-stress person, you may start to experience ulcers. And the way you'll know, one way you'll know it's an ulcer, is that it always hurts in the exact same little spot. Like your stomach will get like a burning feeling, but it will always be in a spot you could almost pinpoint with your finger. Every time you get that burning feeling, it's in that one little spot, okay? Um, and if it happens in the intestines, um, it could result in um, bleeding inside. Well, ulcers in your stomach can result in bleeding inside. The way you would know um, that you have like a serious ulcer problem, besides the pain, um, is that uh, it'll show up in your waste products. And the way it shows up, it won't look red like blood, is that when blood gets digested, even if it was blood from animal juice or something, when it gets digested, um, the waste product comes out really, really black. So if you were to use the toilet and your solid waste wasn't brown, but really black, like black, like, uh, black, like real black, like the, like the lab tabletops in the class, in the science classroom, um, shouldn't be black like that. And if that, that could happen to anybody, by the way, for a day or two, you could have a little minor health event that you don't even know about in your body where a blood vessel in your intestine breaks, but it's small, it bleeds a little bit, and, and your waste will be really black, and also it's, it's powerfully, powerfully stinky, smelly, like in a way that you'll know something is unusual. Now, that could happen to anybody for a day or two, but if it's like two weeks of that, might be something you tell the folks about, or if you're grown when it happens, you tell a doctor about it. And they'll, um, they'll ask you to um, bring in a, a, a sample so they can look at it, which means you use the toilet paper when you go to the bathroom and you put the toilet paper in a Ziploc bag and put it in a brown bag so nobody knows what you're carrying. And they'll test it to see if there's blood cells in there. Um, and you can read all about how they treat that stuff. Diabetes, most of us have heard of. Diabetes is the inability of a person's body to control their blood sugar. When you eat uh, breakfast cereal or any kind of starch or sugar at all, rice, potatoes, whatever, your body digests that down into sugar but your pancreas makes a chemical called insulin, which slows down how fast the sugar gets absorbed. It kind of time releases the sugar to your blood. So if you eat something starchy or sugary, you don't get this sudden sugar high that makes your mitochondria go crazy and then all of a sudden it's gone. A diabetic gets that. A diabetic will get a sugar rush that in some cases is life-threatening, like so bad that their heart will be racing. And then when the sugar's all burned out real quick, they crash, maybe pass out. So a diabetic has to be super careful about this stuff. It can be inherited genetically. You may know kids who are diabetics. That's called type 1 diabetes. Um, it used to be called juvenile diabetes because it, it's recognized in children. If you were diabetic at your age, they'd probably know it already, okay? And you'd be treated with insulin or whatever it is they have to do. But most adults in America who have diabetes gave it to themselves. This is called adult onset diabetes or type 2 diabetes where if a person's overeating carbs their whole life, and it usually comes along with being very, very overweight, um, your pancreas can give up trying to fight all the sugar, and the pancreas just starts quitting, and then you have diabetes, and that can be really, really life-threatening. Um, on my father's side, my grandmother had uh, a leg amputated because she was diabetic, and uh, blood would not flow well to her legs anymore. And one of her sisters, one of my great aunts, had two legs amputated. People go blind from diabetes, and of course people die from it. So read up on that and see what's up. Gallstones. Okay, your liver makes this chemical called bile. Bile digests fats. But it doesn't go straight into your digestive system. It's stored in this little teardrop-shaped organ under the liver called the gallbladder. And your body stores up bile until your stomach detects that you've eaten something with a lot of fat or oil in it. And so when that happens, the gallbladder squeezes and the bile comes out and goes into the intestine to be mixed with the digested food from the stomach so you can digest fats. Some people build up little crystals of minerals and cholesterol inside this gallbladder, usually associated with stress, 
and they're like little rocks in there and they don't hurt you or anything until you eat something with fat in it and the gallbladder squeezes to get rid of its bile and when it squeezes all those little sharp rocks and they're hurt and it hurts enough to drop you to your knees you won't you won't mistake it if you're having a gallbladder problem now it's unusual for kids your age again uh, although uh, my niece one of my nieces uh, had serious gallbladder problems in her 20s that's unusual but it can happen um, they can be broken up with ultrasound treatments that kind of rattle them into little bits that can get out of the body without hurting. Um, or sometimes they surgically go in and remove them. Or if the gallbladder looks like it's going to be a serious problem, they'll just remove the gallbladder. And then they connect the liver directly to the intestine without the gallbladder in between. And when somebody's had their gallbladder removed, they usually have to watch how much fat and oil they eat. Like, they maybe can't eat the sausage and peppers anymore because their body doesn't store up enough bile to take care of them when they have a meal. So people who've had their gallbladder removed can do what they want. They usually have to monitor. They can have the pizza, but not with the olive oil and not with the pepperoni, that kind of thing. All right, diarrhea, the big D. Everybody's experienced diarrhea. Diarrhea is real simple in one way. Um, your large intestine's job is to remove all the water from everything you drank that had water in it or ate that had water in it, like salad has a lot of water in it and uh, return that water to your bloodstream. If your large intestine, for whatever reason, stops doing this, then your waste product has a lot of water in it. When you go to the toilet, you're like, oh no, diarrhea. You can take little pills, Imodium is a popular name for one, that um, makes your large intestine either get back to work or makes it slow down so that the waste doesn't move through you so quickly. So like, you know, if you're going to be the bridesmaid at a wedding or you've got a big party to go to or you've got a plane ride to go on, you can take Imodium and it will solve your problem for now. But a lot of times diarrhea is caused by having germs that got into you and that's your body's way of trying to get rid of the germs as fast as possible. So when a person has a real, real bad case of diarrhea where they're running to the toilet and running to the toilet, your body's really trying to get rid of that stuff. The um, medical solu solution to it, one of them is drink lots of water. And when you have this problem, that seems opposite of what you want to do. You think, oh my God, my problem is water. Why should I drink water? Well, it's because you just lost all that water. All the water, all the H2O you got from all your meals for the last 24 hours, you just lost it down the toilet. So you've got to get water in you or you'll be dehydrated. But if it's bad case, you're going to run to the toilet and get rid of it all again, right? So you've got to drink again. So this is um, counterintuitive. People think, why should I drink water when water is my misery? But if you have diarrhea, you've got to drink a lot of fluids. Read about the rest of it in the notes. And then finally, hemorrhoids. We giggle about hemorrhoids because you see it on TV commercials when you're watching old people TV like Judge Judy. Um, basically, your butt, your anus, uh, is a ring of muscle. And it's served by a bunch of arteries and veins and capillaries to give it oxygen just like every other muscle in your body. But because of what the anus's job is, it can sometimes get irritated, usually by people who, people who push too hard when they go to the bathroom. Um, and uh, the, the blood vessels get irritated and it gets real sore and then it really hurts. And the problem with hemorrhoids, the, 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 the annoying problem with hemorrhoids is it's hard to get rid of them because you can't, you know, if you pull a muscle in your arm pitching a baseball game, you can put your arm in a sling and not use your arm for a couple days. But if you develop hemorrhoids, you, you can't not go to the bathroom for three weeks while it heals. So hemorrhoids are kind of hard to get rid of. They're an annoyance more than a life-threatening thing, but um, very difficult. So you see commercials for remedies for this, and that's what that's all about. Oh, by the way, I was mentioning diarrhea before, uh, when there's too much water in your waist. Uh, the opposite is constipation. When there's not enough water in your waist, and, and the solid waste kind of packs in like cement, and you can't go. Um, one thing that can cause constipation is if you hold hold it too long. In other words, if you're a sort of person that only wants to do number two when you're home and you're on a road trip or you're visiting friends overnight or whatever and you just don't want to go to the bathroom in other people's houses or in, in you know, rest areas and stuff, um, people who hang on to it too long, um, the large intestine keeps removing water. The longer you hold it, the more water comes out. And that can cause it to impact and hard to get out. So hooray! Uh, ailments of the digestive system. Study all your stuff. Uh, you got a quiz coming up that's on everything about digestive system. And that's coming up soon. And then uh, we're going to round out the year with a unit test on all human body stuff. Study your notes. Get them printed out. Get all your charts. Be organized. Talk to you later. Be well. Bye.